Well done, everyone. We made it. We're here at the closing ceremony. Woohoo! Um, in true New Zealand fashion, I am going to quickly offload to the Professor David Legg over here. Over to you, David. Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm from Canada. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> We're here uh, for the closing ceremony to say thank you. Uh, to say bon voyage, to say we hope you met some new friends, we hope you reconnected with some long-lost friends. And we're also here to share uh, some of our best and brightest. And so we have a number of awards that we'd like to celebrate uh, on behalf of IFAPA and ISAPA, the organizing committee. And we also want to provide you with a sneak peek for what's to come in 2025. I also want to take a quick moment, and this is a, a personal choice on my part. Um, I mentioned at the very uh, start of the conference, um, and I think I, I referenced Luke Combs. How is that for an academic conference, re referencing Luke Combs? And I talked about, you know, what would you be doing if you couldn't be doing this? And I said, I, there's nowhere else I would rather be, and I stand, I stand by that. And and the reason for that is the people um, that you connect with and the people that you get to know. <sighs> Anyways, um, people come and go from our lives. And one in particular who many of you know in adaptive physical activity circles uh, left us this last year, and his name was Eli Wolf. And he's a, I, I know many of you were connected to him um, in some form or another. And I just... I just personally, uh, he was a, a friend of mine for probably close to 30 years um, and someone who I loved dearly. And I loved watching him raise his children. I loved uh, watching him come up with the zaniest and craziest of ideas. But I miss him. And I just wanted a chance to, to say that I, I do dearly miss him being here and celebrating and being part of something like this. And so again, I stand by my comments about where else would I rather be. I'd rather, there's nowhere else I'd rather be other than here with people like Eli. And I'm sad that he wasn't able to celebrate something like this with us. But this, I don't want this to be a sad time. I want this to be a happy occasion and I'm sure Eli would concur with that. So we're gonna begin with the first of our awards, which are the International Federation of Adaptive Physical Activity fellow recognitions. And this is one of the highest honors that an academic can have within the, uh, within the confines of adaptive physical activity, and particularly within the organization of the, of the International Federation of Adaptive Physical Activity. And we have one of the individuals here um, that is being bestowed with a fellow recognition, but we do have representation of one of the others, and then there are two who were not able to join us. But we still want to present them with a plaque and have a photograph taken. Um, Dr. Sit, I did see you. Where? Oh, there you are. So Dr. Sit, I'll get you to come up uh, with me. I'll present the plaques, but we're going to begin with the individual who is here. And it's Dr. Megan Lloyd, who's an associate professor at the Ontario uh, Technical University just outside of Toronto. Megan, please come on down to receive your plaque. The other two that weren't here, and we'll share their plaques with them um, by mail, is Dr. Omar Hindawi, uh, who's a professor of adaptive physical activity at Hashemite University in Amman, Jordan, and Professor uh, Pan Chen Yu, who is from the National Kaohsiung Normal University in China. And those two individuals were not able to join us, but a round of applause for those two for receiving their fellowships.
And then the final one, um, where, is, where is his doctoral student? I know, there she is. Come on down, please, because he asked us to present the award to you so that you could then deliver it to him in Virginia. Um, and this is for Justin Hagel, who I, for the longest time, pronounced Hageli. Uh, and he, yeah, he always laughs at me every time he sees me. Um, and doc, Dr. Hagel is an assistant professor at Old Dominion University in the United States. A round of applause for Dr. Hagel, please. Thank you, Dr. Smith. All right, our next award is the Young Professionals Award. And we've made a, a tradition now of asking past presidents uh, to join us to speak about the award, in part because many of them um, were involved in the creation of the awards. And Dr. Karen DePa is at Virginia Tech University in the United States, and she was the IFAPRA president from 1995 to 1999. Greetings, IFAPA colleagues. I'm currently in Virginia, uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia in the United States, but I wish that I could be with you in New Zealand right now. It appears from Twitter that the symposium is going well, and I'm excited um, that you are able to attend. I was pleased to be invited to spend a few moments with you to share some reflections about the Young Professional Award. As you might be aware, Claudine Sherrill received the first LED Friedman Award at the 1989 Symposium in Berlin, Germany. Upon receiving this award, it was Claudine's wish to pay it forward and to honor emerging professionals. And she did that by establishing the Young Professional Award. I'm pleased to announce and congratulate Dr. Scott McNamara he is an assistant professor at the University of New Hampshire, and he has achieved much already, and obviously there's much more to come in the future. Please join me in congratulating Scott McNamara, the 2023 Young Professional Award recipient. I wish each of you success on your APA journey, and perhaps our paths will cross in the future. All the best to each of you. Come on down. <laughs> and just as an aside, previous winners of this award include Dr. Sit, Megan Lloyd, Kwok Ng, and Wesley Wilson. You're in good company. Congratulations. I was told I was supposed to say some words, so I uh, appreciate it. And I am very honored, and that was, that was uh, unexpected, so that was really, really nice. Uh, I am honored and humbled to stand before you and as a recipient of the Young Scholar Award today. Um, I have been privileged to have dedicated my work so far in the field to helping uh, identify and dismantle barriers faced by disabled individuals although we've only begun to chip away at those. So, and I firmly also believe that any success I might have had is not my own, but rather uh, to so many other individuals in the field and in my life. And I just really appreciate being part of such a supportive community that is always pushing me to do better and pushing the field to do better. And I'm very honored to be part of that. And to help me also learn, grow, and reflect. And just also on that, I am a Texas Women's University graduate with my PhD, which is where Claudine Sherrill uh, originally is from. And so I actually never had the chance to meet uh, Dr. Sherrill. She was living in the area, but our lab was dedicated to her, and everything we did was dedicated to her. It seemed like her photos was all over the place, and um, but I never had the chance to meet her. But I was, um, she's a big part of my professional experience and knowledge, and I'm very humbled and appreciative of this award, so thank you. Thank you. 
Our next award, and our final award, uh, is the Ellie Friedman Award. And so we have two individuals who are going to help us introduce the recipient of this award. And the first is Dr. Gudrun Doltepper, who was the president of the International Federation of Adaptive Physical Activity from 1993 to 1995. Dear colleagues, dear friends, greetings from Berlin. I had hoped so much to be able to participate in this year's ISAPA in New Zealand. But unfortunately, this was not possible due to the Special Olympics World Games here in Berlin, which just came to an end. Let me take you back to the year 1983. The fourth International Symposium on Adapted Physical Activity was held in London, and that was why I met Illy Friedman for the first time. Can you imagine? This was 40 years ago. We immediately became friends, and we visited each other in Israel as well as in Germany. As hosts of the seventh ISAPA in Berlin in June 1989, we had hoped to welcoming Ellie with her new book, Laban Alexander Feldenkrais, Pioneers of Awareness Through Movement Experience. During the preparations of the symposium, we received the sad news that Ellie had passed away. This was the initial spark to establish the LED Friedman Award in 1989. And I would like to mention that we were very happy that Ellie's husband, Ernst, came to the symposium to present her book. At this symposium, one of the most remarkable speakers was Professor Dr. Robert Stedward from Canada. The topic of his presentation was Sports for Athletes with Disabilities, Future Considerations. Just a few months later, on 22nd September 1989 in Düsseldorf, Dr. Stedward was elected the first president of the International Paralympic Committee. During the following years, the IPC and IFAPA worked very closely together. Paralympic Congresses were organized in conjunction with the Paralympic Summer and Winter Games starting in Barcelona in 1992. The VISTA conferences were established in 1993. The first edition entitled The Outlook was held in Edmonton and Jasper, all very successful events focusing on high performance sport for athletes with a disability. IPC President Dr. Stedward has been a driving force behind the enormous development of the Paralympic Games and the close cooperation between the IOC and the IPC. And he paved the way towards inclusion of athletes with a disability. Dr. Stedward, you are an inspiring and impressive person, an outstanding leader and visionary of the Paralympic movement. In addition, you have made remarkable contributions in the academic community as a researcher, as a teacher, and as an author. Thank you so much for everything you have done. It is an honor and a privilege that I can present to you today, together with Ellie's son, Professor Rafi Amit, the LID Friedman Professional Contribution Award. Congratulations. Thank you, Gudrun. So our next speaker is Ellie's son, uh, Rafi Amit, who's a professor um, at the University of Pennsylvania in the United States. Hello, everyone. Greetings from the campus of the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School. I'm Rafi Amit, the son of the late Dr. Ellie Friedman. I'm honored and pleased to join Professor Dr. Gudrun Tepper on the occasion of awarding the Dr. Ellie Friedman Professional Contribution Award to you, Professor Dr. Robert Stedward, at the 24th International Symposium on Adapted physical activity. As Professor Tepper pointed out, she, along with my late father, Ernst Friedman, and myself, established the award in memory of my mother's contribution to adaptive physical activity. Everyone refers to my mother by her first name, Ellie. So as Ellie developed her ideas about the contribution of movement to child development and self-awareness, who else can she test these ideas on other than her one and only son? <laughs> well, 
Well, it was challenging at times, but it was also fun and rewarding. So congratulations to you, Professor Stedward, and all the very best to everyone at the symposium. Thank you and goodbye. And so if it's not clear already, the recipient um, this year of the Ellie Friedman Award is Dr. Robert Stedward, who was my supervisor and my mentor and the person who introduced me to my wife. Uh, so I do owe him a great deal of thanks and appreciation. Um, Dr. Stedward was not able to travel and be here in person, but I did have the opportunity uh, to drive up to Edmonton, which is three hours north of where I live in Calgary, and present the award to him in person. And that I, if I have to rank order my academic professional uh, highlights, that would rank among the very, very best. Um, and so I'm grateful that I had an opportunity to do that to him again before uh, he too uh, perhaps is no longer around to, to receive those things in person. And so we did put together the video from Dr. Sedward receiving that. I, I think it's also worth noting, I was looking at the list of previous recipients to this, and it, re it really is kind of fun for me. Dr. Karen DePauw, who spoke earlier, uh, received it in 2013. Dr. Shaika Hutzler, who will be traveling to Lithuania in the next couple of weeks from Israel. Uh, received it in 2017. Dr. Pauli uh, Rintala, who hosted ISAPA in Finland, uh, the, last, uh, the last time we hosted a, a conference online, received it in 2019. And Dr. Martin Kudlicek, who was the one who can ask me and, and twist, arm twisted me to run for president, um, was the one who received the award in 2021. So without further ado, Dr. Stedward. Dear President Legge, and dear friends of the International Federation of Adapted Physical Activity. I am both humbled and honored to be presented with the Dr. Ella D. Friedman Award. However, I have always believed that no one ever achieves anything on their own. It is a team effort. Therefore, I accept this recognition on behalf of the thousands of volunteers and professionals whom I have had the privilege of working with over my more than 55 years within the adapted physical activity environment. I have many fond memories and have witnessed many milestones over the course of history in our organizations. Memories of my friends and pioneers who have been the leaders responsible for the success of IFAPA and the Paralympic movement. And there have been many milestones that have also affected our growth and success, such as the 1987 Arnhem Seminar, where we came together and passed 23 resolutions to create a new world body of sport for athletes with a disability, ensuring integration, inclusion, and having a sport model. In 1989, in Dusseldorf, Germany, on September the 22nd, at the inaugural General Assembly of the creation of the International Paralympic Committee, where I had the privilege of being elected as the founding president. And in 1993, we created Vista 93, where we brought together athletes, coaches, administrators, medical staff, and researchers to talk about topics that would help the growth of our organizations. And finally, in the year 2000, in Australia at the Olympic and Paralympic Games, the former president of the International Olympic Committee, Juan Antonio Samaranch, and myself as president of the International Paralympic Committee signed a memorandum of understanding requiring all future bids from countries to include both the Olympic and the Paralympic Games with same venues and same organizing committee. For IFAPA now and for our future growth to be successful, we must incorporate what Ella Friedman said. 
to encourage the development of passionate enthusiasm and inspiration in young adapted physical educators and to help produce a long line of possessed leaders. I believe this will happen through leadership, volunteerism, diversity, education, and research. So thank you very much for this honor and recognition. I will cherish it for the rest of my life. Please go forward and do your very best to make a difference. So that concludes the awards portion uh, for the closing ceremony. Now it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce Adele and Ursula, who are going to walk us through ISAPA 2025. Thanks, David. Um, first, I would like to start with thanking the organizing committee for this conference for our welcome. And we're still having a great week and we're still looking forward to enjoying the next two days of this beautiful country and having a chance to see it. And also for the openness to engage with us to help us to bring forward a successful conference in two years time as well. So thank you. We really appreciate that. Um, I suppose firstly, the dates you have there, the 16th to the 20th of June, um, that's just some of the environment that we, we have for you to see when you arrive. Um, we're located, I suppose Ursula and I both are uh, lecturers and researchers in the Munster Technological University in Kerry, the south of Ireland, um, and we're the host organisation for that uh, seminar. So that is our main building where we'll be located, that's the hub. Now it's very new and it actually looks a little Lego-like, I think, um, but that building was opened in 2019. And closed very quickly in 2020 for a while. So the veneer and everything is still very, very new. Um, and it's, it was designed to be universally accessible. In fact, it is, it is an exemplar facility in Ireland alone for its accessibility. So we're very proud of the building. And not just for um, accessibility for sports, but also physical activity, recreation, and teaching and learning as well. So it's an exemplar building that people are being pointed to when they're now developing buildings in Ireland at the moment to ensure universal design. Uh, across the way. So we are, we're very proud of it, as I said. Uh, located in the building is also our, our UNESCO chair, which is transforming the lives of people with disability, their families and communities through sport, physical education, recreation and fitness. So that is located in this Kerry Sports Academy. And also Active Disability Ireland, we heard from Brenda earlier, is also located there. One of the offices is there, the founding office, Brenda, and then there's another office then in Dublin. But it started from here, from this location in the south of Kerry. Um, so, so there's a lot happening in this hub. We have a huge amount of partners available for us and with us um, to deliver this already who've come on board very enthusiastic about this whole conference and so we're, we're delighted to, to be sharing the development with them. Uh, I suppose there we are. This is the, for those of you who are not, geo well, geo I was geographically challenged coming here, so I'm sure you're ge geographically challenged going to the Northern Hemisphere. But that's what we look like, a tiny island, 350 miles north to south. I'm not sure, 150 across, possibly. But, uh, and there at the very bottom, in gold. Now, the gold is significant because um, Kerry is often called the Kingdom of Kerry. So it literally has everything it needs there across those confines. Um, and we don't need anyone from outside, literally. So... Um, <laughs> What do we have in the sense that we have um, a whole load of coastline, not unlike you here, beautiful coastline, uh, panoramic beaches, uh, roadways like the Great Ocean Road here, we, we have those. Uh, we have the highest mountain in Ireland is located in Kerry. Um, and we have, uh, uh, most importantly, we have some of the best golf links, not just in Ireland, but in the world. So just to add, if anyone is planning to extend their stay when they come and would like to play golf, please do contact me. I will help you organize that. And equally, if you're my size, I have loads of spare clubs I can even give you. So, you know, touch base, extend your stay, make the most of it, because people, you'll have to book early, you know, because the Americans take up all of the good links courses. They do, yeah. Because they missed out on COVID. It. and so all those bookings are there now so you can't get out on the links this summer but just plan it early and let me know and I will certainly help you with that um, so that's where we are airports very well served we have a small airport a um, little bit bigger than Dunedin I would say yes, yes, no smaller <laughs> yeah smaller uh, and they won't lose bags or anything along the way <laughs> 
uh, um, very, very good customer service and all of that. So that's, that's located in Kerry. And then outside we have Shannon, which is just further up. And a lot of American flights come into Shannon. And we have Cork. And then we have Dublin. So we're very well serviced uh, with the road network, rail network, a long way to get there. So it's very easy to come to Ireland. <laughs> Um, okay, accommodation-wise, we have pleasure of accommodation of all types, uh, four or five-star hotels, uh, apartments, student accommodation, apartments to be rented out, etc. as well. So to suit all budgets and all uh, requirements and within reasonable walking distance to where we are located for the main hub for the seminar. Okay. Which one? The middle Just, button. Yeah. Okay. Hi, so I'm Ursula and I'll be just talking through a few other parts of the conference and I suppose one of the main things to start planting the seed for now is the themes of the conference. Um, so the main theme is APA 2030, so working towards 2030, leveraging sustainability and rights to advance APA policy, practice and research. So we're very much guided by the sustainable development goals, um, but equally like this conference, looking at the linkages between research and practice and how that's informed by policy. So trying to join together those elements so that we're working together to a common agenda. So underneath that, we have three sub-themes, creating new opportunities to thrive, inclusivizing our world, and something we've been hearing a lot about this week, that mantra of nothing about us without us. And right from our planning of the conference, we will be working with people with disabilities. And even like Adele said, the building that we're in, when we sat down with the architects for that, we had people who were blind, people who had mobility issues, designing that with the architects. So that's very much part and parcel of how we organize things and will for the conference as well. So be assured that accessibility in all formats is going to be to the top of our agenda. Things to do, we'll obviously have the conference uh, for a number of hours per day, but the Irish like to add as much in as possible. Um, so we will, um, if you come to Ireland, I suppose it will be a priority of ours that you understand our culture, you get to experience that, you get to socialise, mingle. The Irish love to talk, we love to dance, um, we do like the odd drink, um, and they will all be part and parcel of the experience. So we will incorporate in a social um, activity plan around it that is opt-in, opt-out, um, and again, we will have um, accessibility at the core of that. Um, at our last conference that we held, the European one, um, we had to do a last minute uh, check of the nightclub to check that it was accessible because we weren't expecting that. So we, we'll, we'll get ahead and, and make sure that we plan 24 hours of the day for those that have uh, the stamina to do so. Um, we will also bring in a lot of activity uh, options both during the conference and outside of the conference. And as Adele said, we're well placed in terms of the outdoor environment um, and there's a lot of opportunity for uh, activity in the water, on the water, on land as well. So we will be building that into that program. Uh, a few words now um, from somebody else. Dunedin. We are delighted to host ISAPA 2025 in Kerry. MTU is massively committed to inclusion, sustainable development and human rights. Join us in Ireland in 2025 for an inspiring symposium committed to advancing adapted physical activity.
There isn't much to say after you see a video like that, um, other than, again, to thank the IFAPA board for selecting us to be the hosts of the 25th um, International Symposium. Um, we promise to do our best in the organising, um, and we promise to extend a CAID Mila Foilcha, which is 100,000 welcomes to all of you, uh, all of you that, that attend. Um, just to finally say that we have, uh, the website is now live, so there's more information up there and that will be updated as we go. So please do look at isapa2025.com. And just to start that, I suppose, um, Cade Mila Foyle show, we have a little shamrock for everyone in the audience. So there, please, if you haven't got one already, take one um, as a little memento and something uh, to help you look forward to 2025. Thank you very much. So I took two things from that. One's to book my tea times now, and the second is to get my rest. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, the last thing before I pass it uh, over to Bridget um, is to say thank you to Bridget. Um, thank you for bringing us to Oteora, New Zealand. Uh, you spearheaded the bid when you were the regional uh, coordinator for Oceana, and you joined IFAPA. I'm not sure if you really knew what you were getting yourself into, um, but you did it with a blog, like you did it with enthusiasm, uh, you did it with passion, you did it with curiosity, um, and you did it with just tremendous professionalism. Uh, you have been an absolute treasure uh, to work with, and I am personally grateful that I had a chance to work with you and to meet you. Um, and before I get too choked up, because I know I've got to pass it over to you, um, I'd like you to come up. It's, it's a small token of our appreciation. But come on up. And Cindy, I'd like you to come up as well, please. And give you a quick picture. So you, I'm passing it over to you, Bridget. But ladies and gentlemen, let's give a roaring round of applause for Bridget Meyer for hosting this conference. David. So I can see. Okay, we're at the end. Um, on behalf of the International Symposium of Adapted Physical Activity Local Organising Committee, I would like to begin by expressing my thanks to the International Federation Board for supporting New Zealand's bid to host ISAPA 2023. I would like to pay particular thanks to Professor David Leg and Dr. Guok Ng for making yourselves available over the past two years if, as we've navigated what at times has been stormy COVID waters. I would also like to acknowledge the support of Sport New Zealand, Paralympics New Zealand, Special Olympics New Zealand, the Parafed Network, the Halberg Foundation, and our partner, the University of Otago, in supporting our bid document. To our local organising committee, please accept my heartfelt thanks to all you have done over the past few years. Professor Lee Hale from the University of Otago for believing in the vision and being our hosting partner. Melissa Letherby from the University of Otago for being in the wings when we needed additional guidance. To Dr Rob Townsend for leading the, the scientific committee alongside Professor Hale and Dr Kate Mossman. Justin Muschamp from Sport New Zealand for your support in leading the Sport New Zealand Scholarship Program. John Sugerson from the Halberg Foundation for leading the Have A Go Day, developing our marketing and promotional material, as well as the ISAPA logo. Steve Brocklebank, our chair and our finance guy. Steve, thank you for keeping the books in order. Ali Copeman, our professional conference organiser. Ali, thank you for keeping us on track and asking the right questions. Lastly, to one of the most incredible women I know, Kate Mossman. Kate, 
You have been on this journey right from the beginning, a mum to Harry and Tom and wife to Scott. You work across, across three different organisations, you sit on multiple committees and you run your own cottage industry. You've been the best sounding board I could have asked for. Thank you, my friend, for all you have done. I would also like to acknowledge your families and your colleagues that are holding the fort while you're away. The commitment of being away does not go unrecognised. Thank you. Our vision for ISAPA 2023 was to create a hybrid model symposium where academics and practitioners would come together to share ideas on global innovation, adaptation and accessibility in a changing world. Never a truer word has been spoken when it comes to a changing world. Over the past three years, we have all seen our world change dramatically. For many of us, it has been hard, very hard in fact. We have all lived it and we've seen it and continue to see firsthand how hard the impact has been on our changing world. ISAPA 2023 has brought together brilliant minds and compassionate hearts, united by a shared vision of promoting inclusive physical activity for all individuals, regardless of their abilities. Throughout the symposium, we have witnessed a tapestry of ideas, experiences and breakthroughs that have propelled the field of adaptive physical activity to new heights. There is still work to be done. We have seen how innovation has revolutionised the way we perceive and approach inclusivity and advancements in assistive technology to creative programme design. Our collective efforts have pushed the boundaries of what is possible, expanding the horizons for individuals with disabilities to fully engage in physical activity. ISAPA 2023 has served as a testament to the power of adaptations. We have, learned, we have learned that by adapting our methodologies, our environments and our attitudes, we can break down barriers and create opportunities for people of all abilities to thrive. The stories we have heard, the research we have shared and the collaboration we have fostered will undoubtedly inspire future generations to continue our mission of building a world where everyone can participate in physical activity without limitations. But perhaps the most powerful theme that has emerged from the symposium is that of accessibility. We have recognised that true progress lies not in our research or creating innovative solutions and adapting our approaches, but also ensuring that these advancements are accessible and available to all. In a world that is constantly evolving, we must continue to strive for inclusivity in every aspect of our work. Let us leave here today and continue championing the cause in our research, accessibility, advocating for equal opportunities, removing physical and societal barriers, and nurturing a culture that embraces the diversity of human potential. As we bring ISAPA 2023 to a close, let us continue to carry the spirit of collaboration and camaraderie that has flourished. We have come from different corners of the globe, bringing with us unique perspectives, knowledge, and experience. Together we have forged connections that will transcend borders and endure beyond these few days. Let's continue to nurture our global network of support, sharing our successes and challenges, and learning from one another to fuel the continued growth of adapted physical activity worldwide. In closing, I would like to again express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for your unwavering commitment to advance the field of APA. Your dedication and passion are the driving forces behind the change that is required to create a more inclusive and accessible world through the power of adapted physical activity. Kakite ano, goodbye for now. Thank you, Professor Legg, for that, and thank you, Bridget, for some lovely words there. Um, I'd like to invite Kiranawa to come up and to formally close us out with a karakia. After the karakia, we're going to have a waiata, which in the Māori language is a song. The words will be up on the screen. I'd like our Kiwis to really lead the way for us, and then if you feel like you want to, please do join in. Kiranawa, over to you. <laughs> Uh, e orai uh, tangata hua uh, itenea
So, kia ora again guys. I don't know if you remember me from the start, but uh, I'd just like to thank you all for being here uh, on behalf of the home people here of uh, Kaitahu. Uh, it's been wonderful hosting you, even though we haven't been here for the last couple of days. Um, but I hope you guys have, have taken a lot uh, out of this wānanga, out of this symposium, uh, to still continue to, to create that pathway forward uh, for all of us into the future. Uh, I'll close us off with the karakia and then we'll have our way after. Bye bye. Te runga tu, te runga tapu te mauri tu, te mauri tapu te mauri, te whiwhia te mauri, te rawea te mauri, no hea te mauri, no runga no rangi no nukutu. Tēnei te mauri ka whakapiki, tēnei te mauri ka whakakake, te mauri o ngā tipua, te mauri o ngā tua, te mauri e rangi kāpita ki te whai au ki te ao mārama. Uhi, wero, tau mai te mauri. Home gentlemen thank you for that and so there's not really much else to say really other than we'll see you all at dinner tonight it's a casual dress code but if you want to look cute then look cute <laughs> we'll have <laughs> otherwise we'll see you in Ireland and maybe in Jordan in 2027 thank you all Isapa is closed Thank you.